I've been lucky enough to guide in Alaska the last 20 seasons and, and through those experiences I've gained a few tips uh, that I'd love to share, specifically catching silver salmon in high water conditions. Silvers want to get out of that fast water. Uh, they want to mill around, uh, maybe even clean their gills a little bit if the water is really, really dirty, um, and then head up kind of to the next area. So if you can really target those transition areas, if you get your boat anchored right on that seam, uh, that can really, really be productive. Typically what I like to do in those conditions, especially when you're fishing with a spinning rod, 12 pound test, uh, I really like to anchor up and use a carabiner on a, on a buoy, uh, and that way when you're back bouncing, back bouncing uh, your rig, uh, which I'll show you in just a little bit, uh, as soon as you hook up, uh, if, it's a, if it's a nice male, it's a hard fighter, you're just not able to, to bring them up against that really fast current, you send the other, the other person in the boat up, unhook your carabiner, float down river, catch land and land your, uh, land your silver, and go back up, and uh, retie, retie off on, onto your anchor. The rig I prefer to fish when it's really high water conditions, especially when I'm trying to find where they might be located, uh, is just a simple rig, just with a corky, sometimes a bead, sometimes not a bead. Uh, I'm a big Gamagatsu fan, octopus, uh, two, three aught. Uh, typically works. I'm going to quickly show you um, how I tie that up. Um, since you're, you're fishing a lot of high water, there's sometimes trees and brush and all kinds of stuff that might be in the water, so you might constantly be breaking off. Uh, especially, I like to tie up a lot, so you're kind of reefing the fish uh, against the current. Um, so I like to use Maxima 12-15 pound test. Uh, and I like to have a lot of leaders ready to go, especially silvers like to swallow the hook. Okay, so I have my three foot leader or so that I'm going to start with. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the eye or put the put the line through the eye. Then I'm going to wrap it around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight turns. Okay, and then I'm going to take the loose end here. Okay, I'm going to go back down this way, the opposite way that it came in. Okay. I'm going to hold that down, then I'm going to take this end, and I'm going to go another four or five wraps. A little spit on it. I'm going to pull it tight. Okay. What this does, okay, is this, is this knot, it'll give me a little, little room in there, so that way I can get the salmon eggs in there, and when I cinch it up, that knot, it's not, it's not going to pull all the way up. And uh, this, this is really easy to, because silvers, they like to steal a lot of bait. Um, so it's really easy to, to get this, this line through there so we can, we can get those salmon eggs back on there. Some, some of the different, different snell knots, uh, they, that knot will slide up uh, to the top and it's really hard to, to get, to get uh, it open all the time. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm gonna use. I'm probably gonna have 15, 20 of these rigged up for a day. So I'll have different size corkies uh, just to see, and I'll have my leaders tied up probably. I don't usually go more than more than three foot on the leader. Uh, in really, really fast water, I typically go down maybe even 18 inches or so, just because that, that current is moving so fast and that thing is just whipping back and forth. Um, and also, it'll it'll stay a little bit, little bit more, a little bit closer to the bottom. Okay, so I have a bead, I have corky, and my hook, and that's it. So I'll maybe start out at two foot, okay, like that, and I'll I'll tie it to to a three way swivel uh, with a little dropper uh, to in fast water. You know, you're talking talking a good ounce and a half, maybe two ounces, two and a half ounces of weight, and 
what I like to do is back bounce right behind the boat. The boat is positioned, it's anchored up right on that current seam. And typically that's gonna be where the, the, the silvers are gonna travel. Uh, they're gonna mill in to the slack water, but they're gonna to have to stay in that current so that they, they know uh, where exactly to move upstream. But in really fast condi conditions, they're not gonna to wanna to stay for a long, long time out in that fast current. They're gonna to wanna to take a little break and then, then move on up. Uh, areas that I look for are like little frog, frog water, uh, little pike sloughs, uh, the slower areas um, where you have fast water going adjacent to those slower areas and that's typically uh, where I'm going to concentrate. Once you have figured out, and lot, sometimes it takes me two, three, four, five boat positions to figure out exactly where those fish are. If, you, if you're anchored up and you're back bouncing eggs and there's nothing, uh, what I like to do is maybe have one, two guys back bouncing eggs and somebody else fan casting uh, with spinners, with jigs, uh, different things until we kind of figure out exactly where they are. And then we might need to, to reposition the boat. Um, but that's really what I like to do in, in uh, crazy high water is stay in one spot, know where they're coming, know when they should be there based on the tide where you're fishing. Uh, and uh, Go from there. Scents can really be a game changer in really high water. Um, there's a lot of, lot of good stuff out there. Uh, we typically use a lot of pro cure, uh, bloody our uh, garlic, bloody tuna, anise. Uh, there's a lot of different things. This one here is just regular bloody tuna. It just depends on the day, but I've seen four or five boats lined up in a row. Uh, and I know two guys are using a, a specific scent and they start yard them out, I'm changing up right now. If, if those fish have gone under my boat, I know that I'm on the right path and I'm not hitting them, I'm changing up. We typically use Alaska Nitro. Uh, is really been really been a good good cure for us the cherry uh, on kings and silvers and then and then from there just start just start adding some different concoctions uh, to figure out which particular particular scent uh, that they might want sometimes sometimes nothing uh, but definitely definitely be trying uh, different different things on any given day because in that dark stained muddy water, uh, it, it definitely can help them um, search out uh, your bait a little bit, a little bit quicker. As far as the technique of back bouncing eggs right behind our boat when you're anchored, there's really nothing to it. You just literally drop the bait off maybe flip it back 10-15 feet off the back, sometimes it's right off the right off the the back of the boat and just lift just make sure that weight you feel that lift or feel that weight rise and then let it go whoop, lift it up again whoop, leave it there lift it up again whoop. Um, when you feel a bite it's kind of like uh, back in Wisconsin you're fishing panfish that sort of thing you don't necessarily always just you're, you're not gonna you're not gonna hit it on a little boom on a little bite it's gonna be a, a little wrap a little wrap and then the pull and you really want to you know if you're if you're fishing bait and you know you have you have bad conditions and you really need to get some fish you, you need to let them take it a little bit um, and as soon as as soon as you get that pull you uh, set the hook give them a really good rip and uh, fish on man it's so much fun it's a great way in in bad conditions that you can really save the day now once you have once you have things dialed in and you got fish in the boat, now we can start changing. Get off a of bait because uh, we don't want to kill. We don't want to kill silvers. Uh, we don't want to have them bleed because they have a tendency to really, really suck in um, the bait if you're really on them. So we, so I typically only allow two fish killed, uh, and then as soon as they, we get our two fish and we're getting more bites, we're getting more bites, uh, we're letting everything go that's a good hook. We're letting everything go that's a good hook. Um, and that way, that way, if we get two or three bleeders, uh, we don't have to let them go. But I tell my clients, if we ever have to um, let one go, um, it's bleeding, uh, we're done. We're done, we're, we're going home. 
but so once we get several in the box now we're starting to change over we're using jigs uh, right in that same seam we're, we're, we're um, jigging um, we're, we're dropping jigs in there dropping flies with a little bit more weight literally you can catch them with a fly rod not even casting just stripping out line use a use a sink tip or or a couple you know decent sized split shot just to get it down and you're just working it back and forth working it back and forth because they're coming on that seam um, they want to be near that slack water um, they don't want to be too far out in that uh, in out in that current it can really be awesome you can really have a lot of fun in uh, horrible conditions so I'm really a big fan of, of jumping to place to place go from slough to slough to slough to slough every place that you can find where there's slack water and current uh, and keep checking know your tides know when they should be there uh, if you're incoming tide and and uh, you you haven't seen them yet and you're you're getting you're getting worried just keep working down keep working down and keep keep finding those spots don't be afraid uh, especially if you see a splash you see you see fish surfacing to check out those sloughs um, I haven't had all that much luck catching silvers in sloughs that are muddy shallow more pikey sort of areas however if you find sloughs that are deeper 8 to 12 foot of water hard bottom I've seen silvers milling in there and those are very catchable haven't had very much luck on bait um, even I've tried bobbers those sorts of things I haven't had all that much success uh, but but twitching jigs uh, throwing spinners uh, flying seas um, a number of different a lot of different blue fox a um, lot of different um, spinners uh, that you can try in there I definitely think the biggest tip that I got for you though is finding those seams get your anchor drop your anchor right on that seam uh, have a carabiner and uh, sit and, and enjoy the motor off enjoy the beauty of what you got and uh, and keep hopping from spot to spot and I think you'll have more success.